Dear Tank Sitter, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much for watching my aquarium while I'm... And while I understand watching this kind of aquarium seems daunting to some, it's really not that bad at all. In this video, I'll show you how to feed the fish, filter the water, make calc water, and a few other necessities that the tag requires. If you're only looking for a certain thing, like how to feed the fish, down below this video, I've cut the video into subjects so you can easily find what you're looking for. Enough talk, let's get into it. When you arrive to the tank, the very first thing I like to do is just take a look at it. Oh, look at that, that's nice and shiny. Make sure water isn't pouring over the side or anything obvious. And then the immediate next thing I'd like to take a look at are the water lines. Now, as you can see here, there is a white water line. And what this does is it tells me if the water is too high or too low. And if that white line matches that water line, you're in good shape. So the next thing I do is I take the door off. And then the next thing I do is I come over to Alexa and I say, computer. Ask Apex Fusion to turn the sump light on. I'm switching sump lights on. Now with the door removed, this is my ATO container. Usually when this container is full, it lasts me around three days. So as you can see, this one is empty. So what I need to do is fill this container with calc water and I'll show you how to do that now. So the first thing I do, I take the line out of the three gallon jug and take the jug out and I just put the line on the ground. And then I take this jug into the bathroom, put it down and take the lid off. Next thing I do, I just give the jug a good shape and then empty it right in the tub. And that's just to drain everything from the jug. And then put the jug about right there. And then I come into my closet and I grab two things. There's a cap that sits here. It has a K on it. And then there's a jug right here. And that's my Kalkwasser powder. I grab a five gallon jug from the closet and take that into the bathroom. This calc washer is pretty nasty stuff. So what I like to do is sometimes I'll actually wear a mask. Once you open this up, there's a powder inside and there's also a spoon. This spoon is a half of a teaspoon. So I'll show you exactly how I do this. So I get the calc washer and I fill my spoon and it's gonna look like this. So what I do is I take it to the side and scrape and what that does is it gives me a nice level teaspoon of calc washer. So what I do with the nice level spoon is I put one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So when I'm done with calc washer, I put that lid on and I put it on tight and put that away. And with my jug ready, I just take the five gallon jug and pour it in. Now it's okay if you splash all over the side. I, I've done this about a million and a half times, so I don't splash as much, but you can splash as much as you want, it's totally fine. Now I fill this to about the halfway mark. It doesn't have to be precise. And then I grab my lid that has a K on it for calc. And screw that in. Tip it to the side. Shake it back and forth for about 10 seconds. Once that's done, Take the lid back off and fill it to the top. And once it's full, take this lid with the hole in it, put it on the top. And then I take this back to the tank. And then set it down with the handle facing to you. I grab the tube, put the tube in the hole, and then lift it up. Push it in, push it to the side, and you're all done. You've just replaced the calc water. And then just make sure everything's put back the way it was. And once you've checked this water line, there's one other water line that you need to check. So grab the door, pull it forward, set it to the side. 
there's this water line. As you can see, there's a white line right here. If that line is just a little bit above it or just a little bit below it, it's totally fine. But if you see this water line up here or down here, that's a bad thing and something needs to be sorted out. Usually when it's high, that means either the sump has broken or the ATO valve back there has gotten stuck. And I'll show you how to fix that now. Over here where the food is, I have a bunch of tools. Just grab this and just tap up and down on that valve and tap up and down on that valve and that'll get it unstuck. You can also take some water and blow it on it if you like. But that should solve the problem with them being stuck. And here's an easy way to find out if the pump is not working, is if you go up top. If you do not see any water coming out of here, give me a call immediately. I'll show you how to swap out the pump. And for whatever reason, if you need to make water, if you come to this closet, you can see I have a vacuum, some mops, and a broom. And these five gallon jugs. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through the process. So I grab my five gallon jug and then walk to the bathroom. I set it down on the ground, walk back, and now in this closet, I have two caps. One has a hole in it, as you can see here. So grab this cap. And on the side of the sink, you'll see two lines come out of the wall. A blue one and a black tube. What I do is I grab the black tube, pull it just a little bit, and then grab the blue tube and pull that out. And then go underneath of the sink, and then you'll see this valve. Turn that valve all the way to the left, and it turns on the water. And as you can see, there's water coming out of the black and out of the blue tube. Now what you want to do is take the blue tube, put it in that hole. And now I'll show you how to set the timer. It usually takes anywhere from like two hours to two hours and 10 minutes to fill up a five gallon jug. So what I do is I say, computer, set a timer for two hours. Two hours, starting now. And when two hours is up, and then repeat that process to fill up as many five gallon jugs as you need. And one more thing to check out while we're here is this gauge. This is the temperature gauge. As you can see, it says 77.8. If this is below 77.5 or above 78.5, give me a call immediately. I'll show you how to fix it. So the next thing is feeding the fish. So the first thing I do is I come over to the cabinet, pop the door off if it's not already off, and then the next thing I do is I come over to Alexa and I say, computer, ask Apex Fusion to turn the sump light on. I'm switching the sump light to on. And then the light comes on. You can easily see in here. And now I come over to my reef station. This has a lot of tools that might come in handy. So I take this container, open it up, take my fish food, and just sprinkle out about that much. Even that is a little bit too much, but it's, it's okay, they'll, they'll eat it all, trust me. And then I put this into the container. Put it back on. And then I take this container with the fish food and this. And I come over to the tank and I take out some water, put it into the container, swish it around a little bit, and then suck it up. And then this is the pump for the aquarium and I put it right in front and I just squeeze it out. And as you can see, the fish are gonna start going crazy over the stuff. I empty it out, but I make sure not to cause an air bubble to go in the pump. So when all the fish food is gone, I just empty the remainder out into the water and that's it. And now I just put everything back the way it was. 
and that's it. And if you don't want to feed the fish that way, if you're just uncomfortable with it, that's totally fine. If you go into my freezer, I will have an ice tray with fish food ready for you. All you need to do is just take a cube and just drop it anywhere into this area. Not on this side, but anywhere in this area. Just drop it in. What it does is it'll melt and go right into the pump and you'll be good to go. And then when you're done, just put the door back on. And then always remember when you're done with everything, go back to Alexa and say, computer, ask Apex Fusion to turn the sump light to auto. I'm switching sump light to auto. And that's it. And just a heads up, in the summertime, I leave these two doors off. And in the wintertime, I leave these two doors on. And that just about wraps it up. Again, thank you so much for watching my aquarium while I'm gone. And if you are an aquarium owner that travels a lot, you know, etc., it would be a good idea if you created a video on how to take care of your tank so your tank sitter knows exactly what to do as well. Catch you guys on the next one. And that's just about it. And that just about wraps it up. Again, uh, congratulations, you made it through this boring video.